Hello, welcome to the Friday, January 27th, 2017 edition of the Sand Center Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today has an article about what happens if you over-automate and somewhat over-simplify your threat intelligence. Of course, we all want to make our threat intelligence actionable. And one way we do this is that we feed it into an IDS. So we are automatically creating IDS rules that will alert us if it sees something that showed up in our threat intelligence feed. Xavier uses as an example MISP, which is an open source collector of various feeds, and it can then convert the data it collects into snort rules. Of course, you have to be careful, and that's what Xavier's article is about, that you are not creating tons of false positives, and that you're testing these rules carefully before you deploy them on a live sensor. One thing I would add to this article is that when you are collecting threat intelligence feeds from various sources, uh, keep some metrics as to how good these feeds are. Do they actually save you time? Do they actually highlight the right event that you should be spending your time on? Or are they just an other source of alerts which really just uh, makes your false positive problem even worse than it was before? And Checkpoint is reporting that it found ransomware for Android phones that made it into the Google Play Store. They're calling it the Charger ransomware. It does disguise itself as an application that promises to extend your battery life and does well what ransomware does. It will encrypt files on your phone and then charge you point to bitcoins to get your files back which is about two hundred dollars or so i think right now that is a little bit cheaper than most other ransomware but the real story here the real problem is that this malware made it into the official google play store Because what we tell our users is to stick to the official store because in the unofficial store, you're more likely going to get infected. That's certainly still true, but not good if malicious software like this slips through whatever defenses Google has set up to detect malicious software. And OpenSL today released an update for OpenSL version 1.0.2 and 1.1.0. Nothing critical here. A couple of denial of service vulnerabilities. You probably should patch as you get around it, but nothing you have to rush out. And remember that OpenSL version 1.0.1 is now officially out of support and you will not see any further updates for it. And Facebook enabled a universal second factor, also known as U2F, for logins into Facebook. This is sort of exciting because U2F does promise to be a real neat, easy to use two factor authentication scheme. It does rely on a USB key, typically a UB key that you have to purchase in order to use it. But what it comes down to is that on this key you will have a separate private key for each website that supports this authentication scheme that you can then use to log into the site nice about this is that uh, you essentially also have a separate user id if you want to for every site so unlike for example open id various websites with which you have accounts uh, don't know that you're actually the same user which is nice for privacy. I just enabled it myself, uh, worked uh, pretty easily. One big problem right now with U2F is that I believe only Chrome supports it, but I have to look at the latest version of uh, Firefox and see if it may support it as well. For other browsers, there are plugins available, but they tend to be a little bit tricky because browser plugins typically can't access the USB port. So you essentially need first some software that's running on your system that interacts with the key and then the browser plugin will connect to that software to essentially log you in. So pretty neat scheme. And if you already have a compatible YubiKey, you may want to take a look and try it out your 
And then just a quick update on WebEx. Well, uh, Cisco is busy patching. We're now up to version 107 on Google Chrome. If you update Chrome itself, you may get the updated version of that plugin. Chrome, whenever you update it, does check for updates but there are some reports that's not always working or reliable. So make sure you're using version 107 right now. One of the earlier versions that were released after the initial uh, bug fix, uh, an exploit has been made public that does detail how the original vulnerability can still be exploited. So that's it for this week. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.